chroma key is an absolute pain in the neck because when you designate the green color as transparent, it leaves a little gray line around your head and shoulders. And there's always this battle where you try to minimize that line. And eventually what happens is you start eating into the shape of your head and shoulders and it looks funky and weird. And it's always this battle. But when it comes to developing animations, like logo sting transitions for OBS Studio, you can employ DaVinci Resolve, which is 100% free, to create what is called an alpha channel, which means that the transparency is built right into the video. So when you drop the video into OBS, the transparency is automatically there. You don't have to designate any color and the edge is crispy clean. It is absolutely perfect. I'm gonna show you how to do this in DaVinci Resolve. This is a game changing lesson because when you learn how to do this, you can create overlays, logo stings, animations, and bring your live streams to the next level. This is an absolute must learn lesson. You are going to love this. We are going to use the editor and not Fusion. Fusion doesn't have a timeline. So so we're going to approach this lesson so that it is absolutely easy to learn and I'm going to show you how to export the videos so that there is a minimal of drop frames and so your CPU is not overworked. I look forward to showing you. Let's get some. Electrify your online presence with live streaming. If you want to learn OBS Studio or any hardware or software that makes your live stream super fun and cool for your viewers, you have found the right channel. Subscribe and click the bell for new video notification. Okay, here's what we're going to cover in this tutorial. First and foremost, we're going to touch on the project settings, where to make changes to the size of the video and how many frames per second that you're using. Then we're going to take all our graphics that are going to make up this sting transition and drop them into the program. And from there, we'll drop them into the timeline and begin to manipulate how they move over time. We'll make our changes and then we're going to take the timeline and condense all the tracks into two tracks, which is the video and the audio. And that allows us to bring it into the delivery section of the program, which that allows you to define the codecs, the alpha channel, and all the settings that make the video perfect for OBS in regards to low CPU usage and virtually no drop frames. It's going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait. Let's go. Okay, I just opened up DaVinci Resolve for the first time, and this is the screen that is shown to you initially. I'm going to click New Project down here at the lower right-hand corner, and I'll name it. Okay, I'll hit create. So in order to make changes to the settings of your project, click the gear in the lower right hand corner. And we're presented with all these different options that we can adjust for our project. The primary thing that you're going to want to adjust is the timeline resolution. And in this case, it's 1080p HD. That's what I usually stick with. You can, of course, go higher or lower. The pixel aspect ratio is set to square. We do not want to choose cin CinemaScope. Square is what we want. And for the timeline frame rate and playback frame rate, I'm going to keep that at 30 because I don't think I want to go with 60 because I don't want any drop frames or any kind of lag in my live stream. So I'll just stick with 30. That works for me. You may say to yourself, well, Scott, how do I make the background color transparent? Well, there's no setting for that. You don't have to worry about it because the background is automatically set as transparent when you're creating your project for the first time. So click save. And now we're ready to drop in the media. Okay, after making those settings, you'll be presented with the cut screen. We don't want to be here in DaVinci Resolve. Click the icon to the right of it called Edit. And now let's drag in the assets. I've got three here. I've got a photo of myself, the word Stay Strong, and the circle. I've highlighted them all, and I'm going to drag all of them all in at once. Boom. Okay, let's get this out of the way. And now we'll drag each one of these elements into the timeline. I'll make the timeline a little bit. We'll pull back so we can see more of it. And I'll drag in... The circle, myself, track two and track three will be stay strong text. Okay, the next step is to make the logo look like it should look instead of like this jumbled up bunch of shapes, right? And a lot of people say go into transform and make adjustments with the position via that method. Well, that's crazy. The easiest way is to move the stuff around with your mouse. And you do that by clicking this little down arrow right here. See it? And the first selection is transform. I wanted to chime in and just let you know that transform is the default selection, but I just wanted to show you that there is a pull down and then there are other parameters that you can control like crop inside there. And this is a toggle. So when you click this thing and it turns white, as you can see, the layer is selected and I can move it with my mouse. So I'll move this out of the way and make sure that my shape, I'll click the 
second track here, and I'll make sure it's positioned right. He, I look a little bit large, so I'll drag the corner down just a tad and put myself right there. That looks just about right. I'll go to stay strong and move stay strong right over the top of my waist so that you can't see it. And that looks just about right. I think I'll make the stay strong a little smaller just to be safe on the edges and we're good. Okay, this is a logo sting that will be used in the middle of a transition and I wanna keep it fairly short in time. So uh, let me zoom out on the timeline by clicking this minus sign here next to the slider and bring it out so I can see the whole thing in view here. And I will highlight all the graphics and hold my cursor on the far right edge, press and hold and drag it to about three and a half. There's three and a half right there, as you can see. We're between the two second mark and the four second mark and three and a half is gonna be right about there. So let me just move it right there. That looks perfect. The next thing that we're gonna talk about is crucially important because we're gonna be defining a command that tells your specific shapes to move in position and or zoom in and out at a defined moment in the timeline. It's called keyframing, and I'm gonna show you how to apply them and how to use them effectively in the program. Here we go. I don't know if you realized it, but when we were adjusting the position of all our shapes in the three timelines, the system added this little weird funky S icon in the lower right-hand corner of each one of the tracks. What this means is each track now is ready to accept keyframes to basically command those individual shapes to move, to crop, to change color, to do whatever we want over time. So let's isolate just the blue circle here because that's the one I wanna to manipulate to demonstrate what you can do with keyframing. And you can turn off the other tracks by clicking this little icon here and it will turn off those two. So when I scrub now, I don't see the, the, the stage strong text or myself. Now, let's click the inspector in the upper right hand corner which will reveal the keyframing parameters that we can manipulate. And I'm gonna click the S icon in the lower right hand corner for the blue circle, and it's gonna clamshell open and reveal this blue line. If I drag this blue line up, you'll see that the circle gets larger in size. Also, if you make it scroll down, it goes away. So what basically we're doing here is we're gonna be assigning points in time so that the system makes it large and small automatically. So let's put the cursor all the way to the left and I'm gonna hit the little diamond next to the word zoom here and transform and it's gonna put a little red dot in there. Can you see that? Now I'm gonna move the playhead forward a little bit and I'm gonna hit the diamond again. And what I'd like to do here is I'd like to have the blue circle zoom in from zero and come into the regular size where it should be. So I'm gonna move the cursor over to the keyframe on the left, I'll hit it, make it red, and then I'm gonna drag it down in size. Then I'll put the playhead over on the white one, select it, and make sure that its size just fills the frame perfectly. There it is. Now when you move the playhead all the way to the left and you hit the play, it's very robotic and nasty and ugly. And there's a way to make it tween. Tween means you're controlling the motion speed from one point to the next. And we wanna make it sort of start slow and come in and end quickly. So if I click the one here, the red one, I'm gonna click this little handle icon right here and you can see it puts one of those illustrator handles on there. And now we can control the speed by which the circle comes into view. Watch, it'll look much nicer now. See how it slowed down real nice? Let's move the handle in a little bit better here like this and let's see if it looks even better. Oh yeah, that's nice. Perfect. Now I made two keyframes. One is zoom and the other one is position for the image of myself. And I just wanted to show you that there's a little pull down here. See how it says position X right here? If, there's, if you click the down arrow, you can turn on and off the different keyframe adjustment area. So you can uncheck stuff and it all goes away. If I hit the down arrow and check it off, I can only see the, the zoom on the x-axis. So you can pick and choose what you wanna see. And the other thing I wanna tell you about is that you can delete a keyframe by just highlighting it, it'll turn red, and then you hit the delete key and it's gone. Now for the text, I'm gonna try something even more cool. I'm gonna apply a video transition. So on the left under toolbox, you'll see something called video transitions. Click that and I'm gonna scroll down and just show you all the amazing transitions that this program has to offer. There's some really good ones, but the ones towards the bottom called fusion transitions are really cool. And I'm gonna select something called Dropbox out of a whim. Let's just drop that in and see what it does. 
Oh yeah, that is cool. So we nailed how the graphic comes into view, but when it leaves the screen, we have to make sure that there is a color that covers the entire frame, because when it does, we're gonna have OBS switch from one scene to the next in the background, and then it's going to disappear from view. So I'm gonna clap my hands and I'll show you the results of my work in regards to uh, setting keyframes and zooming. Here we go, three, two, one. Okay, here's the results of my work, let's hit play. All right, it's a little bit off in regards to position, but for the most part, I think we can stick with it. Okay, let's add sound. I just uploaded two waveforms from a fantastic website called freesound.org. I highly recommend that you sign up for it. Just make sure that when you're searching for the sounds at that website, that you designate that you only wanna see results that are commercial free because there's some stuff that's not commercial free that's mixed in with the results. So just be aware of that. Okay, I'm gonna drop in the first waveform. I wanna let you know that when you're in the media pool and you've dropped in the waveforms, you can cue them by just simply mousing on it and dragging your mouse, watch. Isn't that cool? So okay, I'm gonna drop the first one in here and put it at the beginning. I'm gonna hit the B key and cut out the first part of it because I want the wind to, hit, to happen right away. So I'm gonna clip it and then I'll hit the A key and highlight that clip that I, that I want to go away. And what I want you to remember is when deleting clips, do, do not, not hit, hit the, the delete, delete key. key. For now, I'm gonna hit the back key and hit the A key again for select and drag that over to the beginning. Then I'm gonna drag it in a second time because this animation has like a double motion in the beginning. And then I'll drop in this different sound effect towards the end, about right there. And I will again hit the B crop it, hit A, highlight, and hit the back key to delete it. All right, let's listen to this thing and see how it sounds. Here we go. Perfect. Now let me show you what I mean again by what happens when you hit the delete key after selecting a track. I'll select A for select, and I'll make sure that these two are red, and now I'll hit delete. Watch what happens to the timeline on the left, watch. Boom, did you see it shrink? And so if you hit that delete key, thinking that you're going to delete a tr part of a track after breaking it up with the blade, you're going to destroy the length of the entire timeline and you're going to go absolutely nuts wondering why your timeline doesn't do what it, you thought it would after making that edit. So always hit the back key when deleting parts of a track, okay? Okay, we're getting close. Now we have to sort of congeal all the tracks into two, one audio track and one video track before we move it in to export to the necessary codec. So in your computer, just take your mouse and highlight all the tracks or click Control A or click Command A to select everything. Then right click on the tracks and select New, New Compound, Compound Clip. Clip. It's gonna compound them into one. I guess is why they call it compound clip. Hit create, and now you have your two tracks. See that? Now we click the little rocket here, and here is the selectors and parameters that you need to make a decision on in order to create the video with Alpha Channel. So here are the settings. And if you want more details on why I'm what I'm about to tell you, you can click this video right here and it'll explain everything, because I conducted tests, and this is absolutely the best settings for this. First you name it, Dust Stinger. Then you define the location. I'll make it the downloads folder for now. Okay, save. And then you select individual clips. Don't forget, format QuickTime. Codec is going to be GoPro Cineform, type RGB 16, check off alpha, export alpha. The resolution should be uh, 1920 by 1080 because we've already defined that in the project settings. Alpha mode should be straight. Quality should be best. Advanced settings, square should be checked off. Data level should be full. Click add to render queue. It puts the job on the right hand side. Click render and it's done. It's only, what, three and a half seconds. It won't take long for it to chug through the video and create it for you. All right, homie, let's pop over to OBS real quick and let's see if this sucker works. I will go over to my downloads folder and drag the file over. Will it work? Here we go. Come on, people. Yes. Look at the clarity of that thing. Now, you didn't hear sound because when you drop in a video with sound, the system defaults to not letting you hear it. All you have to do is click the cog, go into advanced audio properties, Find the video, here it is, stinger000.mov. Click monitor and output, close it, turn down the volume a little bit, and let's go back in. 
Perfect. Okay, now let's add this graphic as a transition in OBS Studio. So under Scene Transitions, click the drop down here and select Add Stinger. Do we see it here? Where is it? There it is. And we'll name it anything you want. I'll just name it, I'll name it Scott's Stinger. Hit OK. Takes you to this screen. We click the browse next to the video file here and I'll select the location of the file which is in my downloads folder. I'll hit open. And it says transition point type. In other words, it's asking what do you want to use, time or frame, as a way to denote when the frame switches from A to B or from one scene to the next. So I'm going to select frame because it's more accurate. And then it says here transition point frame. So they want to know what frame to actually switch it. So let's go back into DaVinci, and as you can see, there's no real number here that designates what the frame is based on the cursor here, but it does show you the time, and so there's a little down arrow. If you click that and you select source frame, it'll show you the frame where the playhead resides. So if I move the playhead to the right here and you can see the color fills the entire frame, that's what we want to use. It's frame number 58. We'll go back into OBS Studio, and in the transition point type frame here, we'll put 5.8. And let's try and see what happens when we hit the preview. A goes full screen, comes back to B. Perfect. Now, I didn't hear any sound. So we need to make sure that audio monitoring is set to monitor and output. We'll hit OK. And here we are in blue swirl. Let's see if it works when I select the next scene. Yes! Now I have something completely cool that's the next video. We're going to dig into Luma Wipes and how you can make your own. Yes, you can go in and tweak and make your own Luma Wipes and how OBS controls the motion of the wipe is absolutely fascinating because it all works from variants of grayscale. It is so wicked cool. I can't wait to show you. Check it out. The video will be, where am I pointing? Over here. All right, I'll catch you over there. Best wishes, stay strong and keep fighting.